On December 19, 2013, in a paper published in the research journal Cell, by administering a molecule naturally produced by the human body, scientists, led by Dr. David Sinclair, were able to reverse the metabolism in the human equivalent of a 60-year-old mouse to that of a 20-year-old mouse in one week. Tissue samples showed key biological hallmarks that were comparable to those of much younger animals. What has changed, in your view, in terms of how we can intervene in the aging process at this point? Yeah. Well, I think that there's been a very large shift in how we think about aging, uh, and it's one way direction. Uh, when I started in this field, seriously, about 20 years ago, uh, the idea about aging was that we lose our telomeres, the ends of our chromosomes, we get mutations in our genome, and these are things that are largely irreversible. And if you try to reverse them, for example, with telomeres, you worry about getting cancer. So the idea back in those days was this is a one-way direction. The most we could do is to slow it down slightly, uh, and that was our goal. But more and more, what we're seeing in the lab and at conferences I go to is that we should be able to reverse aspects of aging. Here in my lab here at Harvard, uh, we've got some early evidence that we can very rapidly turn back the metabolic clock, at least in mice. And this happens within days. And we're just starting, but I think eventually we'll learn more and more, and more of the process of aging will not just be slowable, but reversible as well. When you say the metabolic clock, what, do we, what are you talking about specifically? Well, as we get older, uh, it's very clear, and we scientists agree on this, that our metabolic rate goes down and there's a particular molecule that we study that we think is critical for life, NAD it's called, and its levels go down from a high of let's say 100% when you're young down about 50 to 50% when you're older in your 70s and 80s. And this is a critical molecule for life. And what we're finding is that when we boost the levels back up to young levels again from in an old animal, that they're rejuvenated and their metabolism the way they process energy, the way that they use their mitochondria. Mitochondria are these battery packs of the cells. They revert back to a youthful state, and the animal has uh, protection from diabetes, among other diseases, because of this reversal. When you reverse one thing, would the organism be mismatched, meaning some things get younger, some things are not getting younger? Does everything have to move together? Well, ideally, we want everything to move together, but there are some parts of the body that seem to be harder to reverse, or at least in theory, will be harder to reverse. For instance, buildup of plaque in the brain for Alzheimer's, I think, is going to be extremely difficult to reverse, if at all possible. But other things, like the metabolic shifts, these things seem to be quite malleable, and we can reverse those quickly. And it's a good point whether we need to reverse everything at the same time, or if it's OK to fix one organ at a time or one system at a time. I think the latter is is the way we should go, and that we should try to fix one system and another and another, and that eventually we'll end up being healthier. But I'm not worried about things being mismatched. Um, even as we age, we end up being mismatched, so we're just trying to bring them back a few at a time. You guys would like to inform the public and have them understand this, and yet you're working in, in, in a mouse which, which ages 30, 20 or 30 times faster than a human. How do you prove it? Well, I'd, ideally you want to prove it in people with a clinical trial, a uh, very standard uh, methodology that, that companies and others use to make drugs. And uh, that's what I've been doing. I've been working uh, through a drug development program so that we can actually prove to everybody, including the FDA here in the US, that we are actually preventing diseases that aging causes. Um, for instance, diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's. Um, among others, there are hundreds of diseases that you could lump into the aging process. And so I, eventually what I think we'll be able to do is to show with firm confidence, scientifically, that we are actually slowing down aging itself. The reaction of the average person is that if you extend lifespan, they're just gonna be old connected to tubes. What are you guys trying to do to break through that? Well, I think we need to change our view of what's old. Um, the, the problem with quote-unquote anti-aging work is that the immediate thought of people is that we're just going to prolong old age. And 
I don't think anybody wants that. I certainly don't. What we need to convey is that we're prolonging health and youthfulness so that an 80-year-old can still, most 80-year-olds could still play tennis and hang out with their great-grandkids with no pain, no suffering, no chronic diseases that plague many people even before their 80s. And it's that disconnect that we're not keeping people in nursing homes for longer, we're keeping people out of nursing homes. And that's often a message that's missed when people don't look deeply into this research. You're serious scientists, but you're tackling the fountain of youth. And it was a myth. The idea that myth could become reality. Well, it's true that uh, we scientists who are working on the molecular biology of aging at the cutting edge of science, uh, we do get lumped in with thousands of people who have come before us who have promised things that have not come true. Um, there are snake oil sales people uh, who have come before us and exist now that tend to muddy the waters and make it a challenge for us to be taken seriously. Even among other scientists, it's been a struggle actually to be taken completely seriously. Um, it's getting better. Um, our field is, is definitely recognized as one of the, the most uh, cutting edge and, and potentially important for medicine. But yeah, there's still skepticism, uh, both among scientists and the, the general public, because it, what we're doing has never been done before. Um, I think when people first said, let's go to the moon in the 1920s, they were probably laughed at because the idea that this could be done was just so far beyond anything that they were used to seeing or hearing. And that's where we are. But it's changing as we make breakthroughs scientifically and get closer to that reality. I think other scientists and the general public are starting to realize, you know what, this might actually be, be real. It's going to happen when it'll be able to be applied to humans, that's the big question.